What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be breaking down some different wide receiver press releases that you can use. We're going to be discussing the name of the press release, the exact situation of when to use it, and the technique that goes into it. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like to get faster, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to 70 plus speed and agility drills all organized for you guys into specific playlists like almost a YouTube channel and we give you the exact sets and reps to do video examples of the drill and we include the workouts into some workout plans on the field and in the gym so check out that very first link in the description below if you would like to improve your speed let's get started with this video so how this video is going to go down is i'm going to be pretty much breaking down a press release i'm going to talk about the name of it like i said the exact situation and then we're going to talk about how you can make it work so this first release is going to be called a slide crossover release so this slide crossover release i personally only like this release when you have an inside shade press coverage db and you have to run a slant now you could do variations of this slide release and we're going to be talking about that as this video goes on but this is a slide inside out crossover okay so now a slide release is exactly how it sounds you are pretty much going to be sliding or shuffling to the outside trying to get this db to overcommit to the shuffle so you could slip back underneath and run this slant the only reason i like it on a slant route a five yard under something quick underneath is because this release does take a little while it is a slower paced release but can be very effective if you know how to use it so and technique behind this release. So the first step on this has got to create some explosion for you. So whether that's a jab step with the front foot or a kick step with your back foot, you need to be able to create some energy to explode you off the ball. The mistake a lot of wide receivers will make is they'll come from a position of no momentum and just try to shuffle to the outside, and that moves them extremely slow. Guys, coming off the line of scrimmage against a DB, it's all about quickness and it's all about twitch. And if you don't use something called either a prep step, jab step, or something called a kick step, you will not had that much explosion off the line. So this wide receiver uses like a little prep step with the front foot. All it is is you pick up your front foot and you just put it back down as quick as you can inside of your frame, but you use it to push off of that step to explode you to the outside. Now, why is that important to explode to the outside on a slide release? Because you shuffling and you sliding off of that platform forces the DB to make a decision. Now, I'm sure all of you <clears throat> have probably seen guys like, you know, Devontae Adams run routes, Justin Jefferson run routes. And what are things that they like to do usually on like a fade route? They'll come off the ball, they'll give this little shuffle to the outside, and then they'll take off and go. Now, when you do that shuffling go, that that sells or that builds into this shuffle or this slide and crossover release because we were trying to make this DB make a decision. So when you're coming off the line of scrimmage, you do not want to shuffle and you do not want to go flat. You do not want to go away from the DB. You want to make him pick one. You want to make him pick the fade or you want to make him pick and sit to the inside on the slant. So you have to use, you have to build off of each other when you use this type of release. You have to pair those two releases together. So it's the same type of first step. You do this little punch step. You do this little prep step and you shuffle to the outside. Now, when you shuffle to the outside, this DB has got a decision to make. Like we said, he could either keep his leverage and sit to the inside and play the slant and give up the fade or he could try to take away the fade which then gives up the slant now i know what some of you are thinking well coach what if i have to run a slant and he sits to the inside and then i do this crossover move and then i run right into him well guess what the next time that you have a fade you make this release look the exact same you have the exact same tempo you take the exact same angle and if he wants to play that game and guess to the inside then we could go take him on a fade it's all about a mind game fellas and to set up the slant you should be you guys should be working this type of release even when you don't have the ball if you're not getting the ball and let's say your job is just to run this db off and your job is just to run a fade you should come off the ball with the same punch step the same slide to the outside and take off and go and run as hard as you can let him feel that speed let him feel that release so it can open up that slide and crossover okay so now after we take the prep step and after we slide to the outside this is where the crossover move comes into play so what you want to do is you want to on this crossover step in the direction you are going first so you see how this wide receiver steps with his inside foot first because we're going to the inside we are trying to sell like we are doing that slide and take off release so we slide we step quickly with the inside foot we push off the inside foot and then we hit this outside crossover so it's a slide one two now could you do it the opposite way? Absolutely. You could slide to the outside, 
Step with the outside foot first, fake a jab to the inside like you're running a slant to hold this DB, then go run a fade to the outside. It could work both ways. That's why I love this slide release. But this slide inside out crossover is a great release to use when you have a slant route or something quick underneath versus inside shade press coverage. So let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Make sure, fellas, we have some explosion off the ball. We are attacking at a 45 degree angle. We're making the DB pick the, pick the fade or pick and stay inside to the slant. So let's play it full speed one more time. Great job sliding, hitting that crossover, and then breaking on that inside route. So now, next release we're going to be talking about here is something called a wide step. Some people might know this as a jab step. I personally refer to this as a wide step, but I'm sure there's a million different names for all these releases out there. It's just whatever helps you remember it, fellas, at the end of the day. So a wide step is pretty much exactly how it sounds. You would step with your back foot. So in this case, this wide receiver's right foot is up. His left foot is back. He is going, or excuse me, his left foot is up. His right foot is back. You would step with your right foot. So whichever foot is back, wide trying to attack the db outside to take an inside release so this is an inside release press release so let's play this full speed let's watch what he does so he comes off the ball here and he uses that prep step just like that slide release that we saw so i personally like this wide step release again wide step is where you step with the outside foot or the foot that is back wide attacking to the outside i love this wide step when you have outside shade press coverage. So anytime that you come up to the line of scrimmage, when it comes down to picking a press release to use, it is not based off of your route. I mean, it kind of is based off of your route, but it's more so based off of what the DB is showing you pre-snap. What is his leverage? How close or how far is he from you? So I love this type of release when this DB's outside shade pressed up right up on the line of scrimmage, not giving us a whole lot of room. Because again, you got to think, why is this DB playing outside shade? He's doing it to protect the outside. He does not want to give up an out route, a corner route, a fade route. Nothing releasing to the outside. Force everything to the inside where he has help. So this release is great because it's a way to attack him to the outside. The best way to get a DB to move is to attack him or threaten him where he doesn't want you to go. And he doesn't want you to go to the outside. So this wide step is a great way to make him think that. You step at him. You step at his leverage. You threaten his leverage to maybe hold him outside. We don't need to break his ankles. We just need to hold him so I could take a free inside release. Whether it's an inside breaking route or whether it's an outside breaking route. I want to take what the DB gave me so I could maintain timing with my quarterback, but also spacing at the break point. It does me no good versus outside shade press if I have to run like a corner or an out route to force an outside release and get rerouted all the way to the sideline. You have no space. You need to give the quarterback space. So now let's talk about the technique of it. So you notice how this wide receiver does that same prep step as the last receiver on the slide release. Why do you think he's doing that? He's doing that for some explosion. Because when you guys do this wide step release, that step threatening this DB to the outside, what are we trying to sell? We're trying to sell like we're taking an outside release. And if you're going to take an outside release and maybe go run vertical, it's going to be fast, right? So you need some quickness off the ball. There is no, And this is not a false step, you guys. This is a part of the release. If you were running a route against zone and you took this step with your front foot and you got off the ball, yeah, that would be a false step. But when it's against press, this is a part of the release. It's to create explosion and energy into that step. Nothing is worse than when you get a receiver who starts out flat-footed like this and just takes a quick jab to the outside. It doesn't sell it. There's not enough speed and that DB is not going to be threatened. But you take that little prep step, you push off of it, you throw your hip into the cut with the foot. If you step wide and bring your hip with the foot, it's not going to be too wide of a step. You're not going to be outside your frame. You're actually going to sell it more, but also have more explosion because the hip went with the step. So let's play this again full speed. So a wide step release is great versus outside shade press coverage when he's right up on the line, don't have any space to move, and that is the technique behind it. You could use this on an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route, depending on whatever is called. Okay, so now next release that we're going to be going over is going to be called like a hesitation hop, if you will, or hesitation skip into a crossover. So now the, the thing I want you to understand about this release is that it is a very, very specific situation. It is a situation where you have a DB who's maybe two yards off inside leverage, and we have some space to close with the DB. Remember what made us pick press releases. We talked about this in the last clip. It was all about the DB's leverage and the distance between me and him. That's how we decide what we do off the line of scrimmage. So this DB's lined up inside shade. This is still considered press, but he's not right up on the line of scrimmage, not giving me any room to breathe. There's about two yards of space. So I know that I might change up my press release here. If he's right up in my face, 
I might give him just a little quick jab inside and then go because I don't need to close any distance with him. But if he's giving me a bunch of distance, that quick jab, maybe it gets him to hesitate. But if I got a release outside, he could cut me off to my angle because I didn't close the space. So that's how we pick this release. And that's when you'd want to use this release. So I'm going to play this full speed. So he comes off the ball, takes something called a punch step. And we're going to break that down in a second. And then he's able to get separation at the top. So First part of this release, remember I said, every press release, you got to be able to create explosion. And this is not a false step. I want to make that very clear. But what this receiver does is he steps with his back foot and takes something called a punch step. So a punch step is essentially where you just punch the ground with your back foot. You step with your back foot, you punch the ground with your toes, and you are trying to push off of that back foot. And then you are going to reach with your front foot. So you punch and then reach. That's how you guys get that like hop and that extra jolt of momentum towards the DB and also closing the space with the DB. So you punch and then you reach. Now, after you reach, this is where you can get a little bit creative. And it's not one size fits all, but you see how this receiver gets into a crossover move. He punches, he reaches and then the right foot hits quickly and then he throws that jab to the inside with the left foot faking that crossover. Now, does it have to be exactly like that? No. You could punch with the back foot, reach, take a couple steps, then hit a crossover. You could come to balance for a second, then hit a crossover, or you could hit it right away like this receiver does. But the punch in the reach is what eats up the cushion of the DB. This is what closes the space with the DB. So when I threaten him to the inside, it's easy for me to get hip to hip with him. And again, this receiver probably could have been a little bit tighter on the stem of the route. He went a little bit wide, but by you closing the space and getting into his toes, that threatens him, that closes the distance, and it makes it easier to burst up into the route. So that's where that punch and that reach step comes. So this like hesitation hop, crossover release, love to use it when we have a DB who's inside shade and about two to three yards off. Let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job punching and closing and then using that crossover to create space off the line. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like 50 plus speed and agility drills that you guys can do all broken down with the exact sets and reps organized into categories for you to watch. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that fellas and help your speed improve. I'll see you guys next time.